Hello guys and welcome back to Sonic Origins. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and made our way through most of Sonic and Knuckles. We faced off against Knuckles a few times. Well, not faced off against him, but we saw him a few times. We also saw a really cool background in Lava Reef Zone. And in this episode, we are jumping into Hidden Palace Zone. This is probably going to be the last episode of this Let's Play because we've only got, like, four zones left and two of them are just boss fights and nothing else so yeah we're reaching the end of this game so this one hidden palace zone is a really really cool one I'm gonna see if i could get as many rings as possible i won't be able to transform into hypersonic at the moment at least i'm pretty sure you can't i don't think there's enough rings what's back here oh this is just an empty hallway i guess i'm not entirely sure why that's there also, in the background, you can see the Death Egg again. That's super duper sweet. Actually, let me jump into this little mini game here and see if I can get enough rings to transform into hypersonic. Yeah, that's 50, so we can just go to the goal, or go to the thing that says goal, teleport out of here, and then we're good. Nice. So that's gonna make this next section a lot easier. Welcome to. The boss fight against Knuckles the Echidna. He's been kind of an annoyance this entire game, so it's time to finally take out any anger we have in this fight right here. Uh, up on the wall there, you can see this mural depicting a fight with between Super Sonic and some sort of like Eggman type of robot. This is supposed to show that the reason why Knuckles was immediately like, hey, Sonic and Tails are probably villains, is because he'd seen this mural um, where these two similar looking faces fought against each other, and then Eggman came and said, Hey, by the way, Sonic and Tails are evil. And so he's like, Oh, I guess this prophecy is coming true. And so he kind of believed it without a second thought. Um, okay, something bad has happened. I beat the boss fight with Hypersonic. The Hypersonic music won't stop playing, even though I'm in normal form, and also the screen will not scroll. Tails, can you help me out in any way? Because I think I'm stuck. Um, help? Alright, I guess I'll do this boss fight the normal way. Just gotta jump on him when he's not expecting it. When he jumps into the air and starts to glide, you can hit him there as well. His gliding technique is actually something you can use if you play as him. He actually does have his own campaign, which I believe I've mentioned before. If you choose to play as him, you'll get, like, similar levels to what we've already gotten, but a completely new story, completely different level design. And that's the end of the boss fight. Now will the game please progress as normal? There we go, thank you, that's what's supposed to happen. Hey, here's where all of the uh, Super Emeralds are. So it seems that Knuckles has been betrayed, and in light of this, he's gonna go ahead and help us out now. We hop into another teleporter. Even though Knuckles is completely out of breath. I guess because he just got zapped, so fair enough. Welcome to Sky Sanctuary Zone. Gosh, how many times am I gonna say that's so dang cool or something like that? Like in this entire Let's Play. Even in this episode, I've just been like, oh, this is really, really cool. But that shot of the Death Egg rising up out of the clouds, crap, that was a lot less cool. But that shot of it flying up into the clouds, finally like taking flight and going off after, you know, we spent the entire game seeing it, you know, either in a volcano or in another mountain or something like that. It's just also so cool. Speaking of cool, I really like how after, it, as Knuckles is being betrayed, we get to see that shot, I don't know if shot is the right word, but we get to see Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles running alongside each other, because they are like, you know, a very iconic sort of trio. And you know, of course, 
this is Sonic Origins. It's supposed to show the origins of all the different Sonic characters. And so seeing, you know, for the first time chronologically, like, these three characters side by side, it's just so cool. I know I probably seem like a huge dork, um, but hey, my channel is called TGN the Game Nerd. I'm going to nerd out a bunch about a bunch of different stuff. I probably should, shouldn't have transformed into Hypersonic because we're going to need to do some precise platforming, and Hypersonic is a bit hard to control when you're trying to do that. Anyways, the gimmick of this level is super duper cool. In this level, we're doing a boss rush against boss fights from previous Sonic games. So that was the boss fight from Sonic the Hedgehog 1, the first ever one that we saw. Also, that robot that you saw up there. The name of that robot is Mecha Sonic Mark II. He is, you know, as you could probably guess, an upgraded version of Mecha Sonic Mark 1 that we saw at the end of Sonic 2, which is really, really rad. Speaking of uh, Mecha Sonic from Sonic 2, when I started playing Sonic 3 in a previous episode, I noticed that for some reason the game didn't save my progress after after I beat Sonic 2, so I needed to redo the final boss fight of Sonic 2 again, and man, I absolutely sucked at it. Anyways, I believe this is a recreation of a boss fight from either Sonic CD or Sonic 2. I'll put up on screen which one it is, because I genuinely forget. I really love this game so dang much, and, you know, I, I looked on Steam, because I was genuinely curious, I looked on Steam, and according to that, I have over 230 hours on this game, which is absolutely insane, I thought it was way less. Because, like, I have replayed, uh, you know, Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 a lot over the past couple of years since this collection came out, um, and, you know, tried to replay through Sonic CD and Sonic 1 a few times, too, and I, you know, I did think... Gosh dang it, got crushed again. I did think that it was going to be a huge number, but I didn't think it was going to be that huge. It's genuinely one of my most played games on Steam. I think my actual, like, most played game on Steam is Sonic Adventure 2, but that's not because I, like, played it a bunch and bunch of times. Um, it's because I think I accidentally, like, somehow left it on, or, like, my computer glitched, and so it kept Sonic Adventure 2 running in the background, um, even though I had sworn I'd closed out of it. I think I also did that with, that also happened with, uh, Batman Arkham Origins, which is another game I have not beaten that game yet. I want to at some point, because a lot of people say that those, that the Batman Arkham games are really good, so I'm either gonna finish playing Origins or play the first ever Arkham Asylum game. One little thing that I kind of noticed is that, um, many of you may know that back in the day, uh, the slogan for the Sega Genesis Actually, you know what? I'm gonna pause that for just a second. I actually have something to talk about here. Um, this is the boss fight for this zone. Mecha Sonic Mark II is actually gonna face off against us, kind of sim in a similar vein to how at the end of Sonic 2 we faced off against Mecha Sonic Mark I. But he's a lot more difficult this time. This iteration, um, he has a few tricks few more tricks up his sleeve, like sometimes he'll, instead of, you know, just running at you head-on, he'll run backwards so you bump into his spikes, like that. He also bounces around a bit more and rolls around, so he's clearly a more advanced robot. If It really feels like he mixed together, like Eggman mixed together, the best elements of Mecha Sonic Mark 1 and Metal Sonic. But yeah, he's down. And I know it says Act 1 right there, but I'm pretty sure there isn't an Act 2. Death Egg Zone. This is a returning zone from Sonic 2, similar to how Hidden Palace Zone was, but in reverse, kinda. It's weird. Um, in this game, Death Egg Zone is much more fleshed out. I really love that background. Again, I will not stop praising the backgrounds, but it looks so cool. Reminds me so much of the actual, like, Death Star from Star Wars. This level can be kinda difficult, but it's the final zone, so it, it makes sense. I might complain one or two times, but... 
ultimately, I'm pretty sure I like this song. I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, back to what I was saying before about, uh, you know, the Sega Genesis. Its slogan was, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Nowadays, we might laugh at that because when we look at, you know, Mar Nintendo's biggest franchise, which is uh, Mario, and then we look at Sega's big big biggest franchise, which I'm pretty sure is Sonic, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure. In a lot of people's opinions, the quality of the Mario games are a bit more consistent. I personally love both franchises equally. Um, it's really hard to pick a favorite because Mario has great games like uh, Super Mario Galaxy and Odyssey and uh, 3D World I really, really liked. And, you know, Super Mario Bros. 1 and 3 and World. But Sonic also has a bunch of great entries, in my opinion, like Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Sonic Generations, um, which I am so dang excited for, for Sonic X, Sonic X Shadow Generations when, th when that comes out. I don't know if it's going to be out by the time I upload this video, but either way, I'm so pumped for it. But yeah, then you've also got Frontiers, which I, you know, enjoyed. Uh, some people, like, kind of joke about that slogan nowadays, but when you look at, in terms of hardware, at least from what I can tell, because I'm not very well-versed in, you know, the technicalities of, you know, game console hardware and stuff like that, as what I, from what I can tell, it's just, like, the basic, you know, from what little I know, it seems like Sega is always kind of ahead of Nintendo, was always kind of ahead of Nintendo when it came to uh, hardware. Because, you know, discs really became popular in the late, like, in, like, 1996 when, um, you know, PlayStation started doing it. Uh, at least that was the first time that I can recall that discs were being used. And then... In 1997, the next year, the next year, Sega released the Sega Saturn, which although it didn't do well sales-wise, they immediately started using discs. Um, meanwhile, Nintendo was still using cartridges with the Nintendo 64. And then the Sega Dreamcast came out, and again, didn't do well, you know, sales-wise, but... Oh, by the way, this boss fight sucks. I think it's called... It's called Red Eye in officially and it just sucks i'm glad that i have hypersonic with me because i just don't want to deal with it normally its attack patterns are obnoxious but yeah the sega dreamcast was actually pretty you know pretty good when it came to like lighting and stuff like that and doing all this extra cool stuff and the nintendo 64 and even so in some cases the nintendo gamecube was a bit behind like when they tried to port sonic adventure to the nintendo gamecube they released a, like, a version that is much worse than the Dreamcast version. A lot of cool, a lot of, uh, stuff, graphically, has been downgraded in the DX port. This act is really, really cool. There's a gimmick that we're going to get to in just a few seconds. And also, this is just, like, a thing for me personally. Um, my top three games of all time... Uh, and don't make fun of me for this list. I know that, like, some people might think this list is weird, but it's my personal list, you know. You could feel free to make your own personal list. My top three games of all time are Yakuza 0, Persona 3 Reload, and then Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors for the Nintendo DS. And two of those are technically Sega games. Because, you know, I'm pretty sure Atlas is a, like, a subsidiary or whatever of Sega. This is just kind of showing how, like, not knowledgeable knowledgeable about these things I am. But yeah, and then also Sonic Adventure, one of my first... One of the first games I remember playing as a kid, and I loved it so dang much. Um, you know, Sega Dreamcast, I was one of the few pe My family is one of the few people, few, like, groups of people out there who actually owned the dang thing. And I really liked it. I played Sonic Adventure on it a lot, and then I also remember there's, like, a football game on there that I would play a lot, and then a racing game, I think, that I would also play occasionally. It was cool. I really liked it. All right, this part I gotta focus, because, ah, dang it, never mind. What the hell was that? I don't even know how I did that. I think Tails might have done that? I don't know. That was weird. So as we're sort of coming to the end of this LP, I just wanted to say that this is probably, like, one of my favorite LPs that I've ever done. 
just because, you know, it's very short, so, you know, I don't really run out of things to say. Like, I r ran out of things to say about the game itself, but, you know, I came up with... I'm able to come up with other topics and just talk about whatever I feel like talking about. And then, you know, it's a game that I genuinely enjoy. Like, if I, when I look back at these videos, like... I was kind of iffy, like, going into Sonic 1 and Sonic CD, but once I got to Sonic 2 and especially Sonic 3, I was so much more pumped up and energetic, and it was just awesome. But yeah, I've got a ton of positive feedback on this LP as well. I've gotten quite a few comments saying that they enjoyed, you know, these videos, and I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who comments or leaves likes or even just watches this stuff. Just genuinely thank you. Also, this gimmick is so dang cool, you get to walk on the ceiling for this level. It can be a bit, like, hard to wrap your head around at first, but I think it's really, really cool. I also like these weird light tunnel thingies that you go through here. But yeah, genuinely, thank you to all of you guys. Um, speaking of LPs that I like, that I've done, my Mother One LP, although it's a bit old and you can hear how my how high-pitched my voice was back when I made those videos, I still think that I did a pretty good job. That was the first LP that I did where I was like, Wow, I genuinely enjoy making these videos. Um, and to this day, I still get comments of people being like, Hey, thank you so much for making these videos. Whenever I need to, you know, get through this part, I always look I look at your I use your videos as a guide or something like that. Something along those lines. And that's so dang cool because I first got into making these videos because when I would get stuck in video games like Mario Galaxy and stuff like that, I would look up videos on the internet and see these Let's Players playing through the game and just watch those. And that would help me get through, and that was sort of my introduction to YouTube as a as a whole. And, you know, watching those videos, I was like, I want to do this someday. I want to be able to play games that I love and show them off and be like, hey, look at this cool stuff, and be able to, you know, actually, um, you know, help people out in these video games. So knowing that I've actually kind of done that, is just one of the coolest feelings in the world, and again, thank you all so much. Alright, this might get a bit tricky, because I might run out of rings here, and then I'll have to do this without getting hit. I pray that doesn't happen, but, you know, it's a very likely possibility. I'm just not good at timing these. Alright, time to focus. Okay, so now that that boss is out of the way, Eggman sort of run out of tricks, so he runs away, and we enter... This boss fight. The Eggman Robo, I think this is called. Um, Giant Eggman Robo is what it's called. And it could be a bit difficult. What you want to do is stand in the middle here between his two hands, spin dash so you bounce back and forth between the two, um, and you attack all of his fingers. And once all of his fingers are gone, that's when the next phase of the boss fight starts. Alright, so now that that's out of the way, that's the easy part. The part that could get kind of difficult is when he shows up on the side of the screen, and the platform starts to fall apart. You have to attack his nose, and attack the glass that, you know, encaps that holds hostage the Master Emerald. Uh, all while avoiding his, you know, fire attacks and avoiding the laser. Thankfully I was able to do that. Um, 
And that is the giant Eggman Robo down. Now, it's time to attack him while all this flying debris falls down and while the platform is falling apart and it can be really tense because, you know, <laughs> sometimes you'll get flung back after attacking Eggman. I don't know if make, using Tails makes this part easier, but once you attack Eggman enough times, we get the Master Emerald back. And if you've gotten all of the Chaos Emeralds, or the Super Emeralds, then you unlock the Doomsday Zone, the true final boss fight. Be sure to collect as many rings as possible at this point, because you are quickly running out, and if you run out of 50 rings, you die, and it's back to the start of the fight. Just make your way through, you'll see a bunch of missiles coming at you. Thankfully, they don't make you lose rings, they just slightly inconvenience you. Um, still dodge them, though, because... You know, if you really think about it, we're kind of on a time limit with the rings. Not too strict of a time limit, but still, not one that you want to mess around with. Also, if you press the uh, cross button or the A button or whatever the jump button is on your controller, then you'll do a little dash forward. That can help. That can help you a little bit if you spam that and just go forward. This robot right here is known as the final weapon. All you have to do is guide the missiles to just run into it. And after enough missiles, it'll go down. Again, you don't have to worry about getting hit by missiles. The only thing that does is inconvenience you, uh, like so. So just aim the missile towards him. And once you've hit him with enough missiles, you will end off this phase of the final boss fight. This final boss fight is great because it has so many more phases than any of the other boss fights throughout this entire game. Now we're in phase two of the final weapon. It's trying to fly off with the Master Emerald again, but of course we're not gonna let that happen. You do pretty much the same stuff though, collect rings, fl fly alongside it, Try not to get hit by its weapons, although it won't, it'll only slightly inconvenience you. Um, but this time, you're able to physically attack him. Just spam the X button or A button or whatever it is to dash forward. Just keep attacking him over and over. Be sure to keep an eye on that ring counter, though. And once you have attacked him enough times, that is the ending of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and the ending of Sonic Origins as a whole. <laughs>